Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. It has been an especially tough week for the OSU family. As you likely know, a retired agricultural professor is among those who died in the parade tragedy. Dr. Marvin Stone had a tremendous impact on the world of crop sensors and agricultural technology. We'll take a look back at his life's work a little bit later in the show. But first, we're talking cotton. SUNUP's Dave Deacon takes us to Washita County for some cotton research. Back in June and July, we were talking with Randy Bowman about some of the cotton varieties across southern Oklahoma. But Randy, we're up here in Washita County. Let's talk about the trial that's going on here. Well, Dave, we're actually at uh, one of uh, Danny Davis's farms, and this has been a no-till farm for, I think, about 20 years. I'd have to double check with Danny on that. And here on the property, you have several different varieties of cotton seed, and, and this is part of a, a, a larger trial that you're doing. Yes, it's one of our, what we refer to as our race trial locations. That's the acronym for Replicated Agronomic Cotton Evaluation Trial. And basically what we do is we work with the seed companies and give them an opportunity to basically select and plant one entry per brand name that they have. And so uh, we also allow our cooperator, in this case, uh, Danny, to uh, have a grower's choice in this field. And this is one of the older style technologies. It's Bolgard II Roundup Ready Flex. Right. So as you'll notice, we just have Roundup Ready Flex only as a herbicide tolerance in this particular trait. And uh, 1044 was released in the class of 10, and the 44 indicates that it was a kind of a medium to maybe late maturity, mid to late maturity mm -hmm. perhaps. But uh, anyway, the Bolgard II, of course, is the insect protection. So again, just straight Roundup Ready Flex technology in this particular variety. This has been a standard for a lot of people in our area, and it's really Good to have this in the trial because as we go down and look at some of the newer varieties with the new technologies um, we will be able to compare the performance of those back to this known standard so randy what we have here is phytogene 333 and, and you can kind of see the difference between the two two plants here yes this variety tends to be a little bit more growthy than the 1044, which it's adjacent to. Uh, the 333 is a new line of genetics from the Phytogen Breeding Program, and it contains the Wide Strike Roundup Ready Flex technology. The Wide Strike is the insect resistance component that makes the plants more uh, resistant, basically, to the caterpillar pests. The Wide Strike is is a Dow product, and of course the Roundup Ready Flex is a Monsanto product. So what we have is a stack gene system with part of the trait belong, one of the traits belonging to Monsanto and right. the other one belonging to Dow. But the 333 has performed pretty well for us last year. Um, we do anticipate seeing some of the new Enlist cotton mm -hmm. down the road in 20, probably 2017. Okay. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll show up in the 333 background, and of course the Enlist technology will be the uh, cotton varieties from Dow and Phytogen that will be, will be tolerant to uh, glyphosate, uh, Liberty herbicide, as well as the 2,4-D choline product that uh, Dow will market and sell for that particular technology. Well, Randy, what cotton variety are we looking at right here? Well, Dave, this is the new FiberMax 1900 GLT variety, the GLT stands for Glytol, Liberty Link, and Twin Link. The Glytol is Bayer Crop Sciences proprietary glyphosate tolerance gene okay. that's used in the, uh, in the cotton. Of course, the Liberty Link is also a Bayer trait that's been around for some time. Right. And uh, it's, it's actually used in, in other varieties as, uh, as well. And then, of course, we have the Twin Link, which is really Bayer's proprietary BT. Uh, again, it is a, a dual gene BT system that's totally proprietary to Bayer. The 1900 has done pretty well in some of the other uh, testing that's been conducted in the region, mm -hmm. and it was Bayer's selection to go in this particular trial. Uh, we can see that it actually has, in, at least it, in, in this particular area right here, it looks like it's got some uh, level of growth to it compared to some of the other entries here. Right. So um, we would suspect that uh, this might need a little bit more plant growth regulator uh, during the growing season perhaps. But uh, again, this is the first time that we've had this particular entry in the area, so we're kind of anxious to find out how this will do for us. And Randy, we're here at the Next Gen 3406. Let's talk about this variety. This particular variety contains the new Monsanto trait, uh, which would impart the dicamba tolerance. Right. And that, that trait is called Extend Flex. 
and it's also stacked with Bogard too, which again is Monsanto's insect trait. But let's talk about the Extend Flex trait because what that does, that's going to be the first legal system, you might say, that the, the first uh, approved system from USDA that will allow us to potentially apply up to three different types of herbicides over the top. And what the Extend Flex imparts is, is tolerance to dicamba, which will be a new chemistry with respect to what will be sprayed on this cotton. It's an old chemistry in a lot of respects, but what will happen when, when Monsanto does get the products approved through EPA, it will be a lower volatile formulation, it will have less drift potential, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the cool thing is, again, this is replicated eight times across the region, uh, across Oklahoma. Yes. Talk about that, that partnership with the growers and the seed companies. Well, you know, we started this program and, and it's still continuing in Texas and, and we brought this with us to Oklahoma. There's been a lot of interest in this. The seed companies are, are pretty excited to have these trials out there because basically they get to take a look at what they want to look at right. and the grower gets to look at what he wants to look at and we all gain something because of the new new traits, new technologies, new varieties. So we do have some opportunities here to get uh, some really, I think, uh, very meaningful data. And from a grower perspective, I know it's a, it's a little hassle for them. Uh, it slows them down, certainly some at planting, but uh, probably more so at harvest and at planting. But I think that uh, there's enough value in this testing program that the growers really appreciate it. Okay, thank you much. Randy Bowman, our cotton extension specialist here at Oklahoma State University.